of giving you guys a little bit of uh, review here. I'm going to give you a quick refresher or a, uh, a topping off on free body diagrams and forces and what we're going to expect from you uh, as we go forward. So uh, I want to review the four kinds of mechanical forces that we know about. So mechanical forces. There's my crappy handwriting. These are the forces that we will expect you to be able to pull out of a diagram or a problem description. Uh, these are the forces we expect you to know exist without having to be told that they exist. Um, when you, I'm just going to try it for color. There we go, more or less. Um, so when you read a problem description, it may uh, get tell you about specific forces that apply that aren't among these, but these are the ones we expect you to be able to uh, identify and apply yourself without being told that they exist in some particular problem. So the first one is gravity. Gravity uh, has rules, like all these forces. Uh, gravity's rules are, first of all, it always acts down. Always, always, always. And because we don't let you tilt your free body diagrams, you know that gravity will always point straight down. So in your raw free body diagram, there should always be something like this. The only reason you would not have that in your raw free body diagram would be if you were doing a problem in space or if you were doing a problem where you had an overhead view. So gravity would be acting into the page away from you, so you wouldn't really be worrying about it. Uh, or if you had a problem maybe where there were two different masses and you wanted to call one M1G you, or call one of the masses M1, you would write M1G. But you would always have gravity. So um, gravity always acts down. That's, that's crucially important. It may get broken up into components if you do your axes differently. Okay, so if you, uh, hang on, sorry. If you do axes like this, tilted, okay, then you may have in your component diagram, you may end up with gravity getting broken up like this, but uh, in your raw diagram, it will always point straight down, okay? The other rule about gravity is it's always has a magnitude of the mass of the object times gravity, or times 9.8 meters per second squared, times the g constant. Um, there is no case in which an object feels the weight of another object. This is called the weight, and an object will feel its own weight. An object does not feel another object's weight. We think in casual, everyday conversation that sometimes you will feel the weight of something if you're holding it in your hand, for example. What you're really feeling is the normal force that object is exerting on your hand. You are not feeling its weight. Okay, so that's, uh, that's gravity. Uh, number two is tension. Okay, tension is what you have when you have a rope or a cable or a string or something pulling on something. Uh, sometimes a spring, but we won't get into springs until the next unit. But tension, the basic rule for tension is it always acts, oh, waz, nice job. Okay, always acts along the, uh, the rope. Or the cable, or the string, or whatever. Rope here is whatever uh, whatever happens to be serving as a rope in your particular problem. And the other rule for tension is it cannot push. So tension always has to pull. You can't push a rope; it'll go slack. Nothing will happen. That's not a big one. Most people get tension right. For th number three. Uh, we have two contact forces, okay? Two two body forces that act, or two sorry, two contact forces that act when two things are touching. One is the normal force, okay? The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface of contact, okay? It's what keeps one object from going inside another, okay? So if you have, say, right now I'm looking at my phone, which is sitting on the desk next to me. Um, What's keeping the phone from falling into the desk is the normal force the desk exerts on the phone. It's a force that says you can't go there, okay? So it's always perpendicular to the surface of contact. That is the two surfaces that are touching, okay? Uh, if you only have, in a case where you have, for example, say, um, let's see, say you have a case where you have like a block sitting on a flat surface, 
Okay, then your normal force, let me see if I can do this, there we go. Okay, your normal force on the block will, come on, will act upward, okay? Um, if you have a situation where there is, say, a, uh, you know, a sphere or a cylinder or something sitting on a surface, actually, let me, let me uh, give you something a little more tricky just to make it clear this is always perpendicular except it's got to be touching, so there we go. Okay, in this case, the normal force will act perpendicular to these guys where they're touching, which is right here. So the normal force on the sphere will uh, point that way. Okay, so that's how the normal force works. The fourth force, fourth and final mechanical force, is friction. Friction occurs only uh, when there's friction. It's always perpendicular to the surface of contact. So all, I'm sorry, not perpendicular. It's always parallel, parallel to surface of contact. Okay, and a nice sort of rule of thumb for friction. Well, let's see. Um, it always tries to prevent slip. So always tries to prevent the two surfaces slipping against each other, okay? So uh, it will try to keep the two objects stationary with respect to each other, so they're, they're not sliding back and forth along each other, and which means its direction depends. Uh, it, won't, uh, it won't necessarily be pointing up or down or left or right. It depends on which way the objects want to move, or if they're already moving, which way they are, they are currently moving. Uh, we've dealt with kinetic friction, which is, uh, let me see this, kinetic, which is friction you have when you're in motion, and static, sorry, static, which is friction you have when you are not slipping, okay? So, not in motion. Okay, so, those are the four mechanical forces that we will expect you to be able to pull out of any problem description without being told explicitly they're there. Um, this, this, I recommend you remember these, you, you learn these four, because there are only four of them, they're not hard, um, and you learn them and remember the rules. The rules are important because they do not disobey these rules. There are no tricky cases where these, uh, these forces don't obey these rules. They always obey these rules. So if you remember these rules, you will know which forces you have. And sometimes when you're looking at a problem, you're trying to figure out, well, like you know what the object might do, but you're trying to figure out why, which forces are acting on it. Well, you can go through these four. You can, you can list them for the problem and check them off and say, okay, I've taken care of gravity. Um, you know that, uh, for example, for tension, there has to be a rope. In fact, that's a good point about tension, has to be a rope. If there's no rope, then there's no tension. Okay, um, and then the normal force you know is always going to be perpendicular to surface of contact, which means that things have to be touching. Sorry, it has to be touching whatever you know. The two objects have to be touching to have a normal force, and friction also requires contact, and it's always going to be parallel to the surface of contact, always trying to prevent slipping. Um, they don't disobey these rules. Other forces will be described explicitly, or we might say in some problem. Um, there's an applied force. A force is applied to this object. And then you just take it for granted that that force is being uh, applied to the object somehow. So if I've got, say, a box on a table or a box on a, on a floor, uh, and I give you that diagram, and I say, oh, there's an applied force on the box to the right, then you just assume that maybe there's a rope pulling on the box, or maybe someone's pushing on the box, or whatever. But you don't worry about the details, you just draw in that applied force that I say exists and call it FA or F or often it'll be given in the problem diagram. So I hope that helps and oh, uh, I think my wife is home so I'm going to go see how she's doing.